Hello everybody, welcome back to another video for the day. Now we're going right back into r slash nice guy stories because I'm actually really surprised that the very first one of these did over so well. So I think it's going to be something I'm going to keep on doing. You know the deal, like the video, comment down below during the video if you see something you would like to discuss and afterwards consider subscribing. Let's go. Our first story comes to us from username shadowphoenix777. How I got through my nice guy phase. Hey, I just wanted to share a story about how I managed to get myself out of being a quote unquote nice guy. The main reason I am putting it in quotations is because I wasn't exactly overt with it or said anything that could make me per be perceived as a nice guy more than just my train of thought. So back in middle school, I was the type of person to listen to any girl's problems and got attached to a bit to any girl that showed interest. That was a very stupid of me in hindsight, but I digress. I did manage to get back with my ex-girlfriend in 8th grade. The story is in my post history somewhere, but me being nice, kind, and smart were literally the only traits I brought brought to the table. We split up in later in the year and she got with my best friend. Now my best friend who I will call Weaver, he was a stud and I admit I was massively jealous. I never took any initiative to kiss to make and moves besides innocent stuff and she was not on board with any of that. I repeat the cycle in ninth grade at a college prep school. I got attached to three girls during these three quarters. I was there and all ended in silent heartbreak mainly because one had a girlfriend, the other had a crush on a friend of ours, and the last one told me no on my last day there. My personality changed for the better when I transferred to my neighborhood school. I knew I had to be tough and stuff like that because it was a ghetto school that managed to do decent enough not to get shut down by Duval County. However, transferring there and getting that idea in my head that I needed to be tough and rigid was the best moment in my dating life. Now, I still had my awkwardness throughout the rest of the ninth grade, but in 10th grade and onward, I really changed. My friend was the one who brought up my personality changes with a conversation we were having earlier in that day. He told me straight up I was a barge for most of the time he knew me, but still thought I was cool. He told me that in the 10th grade, my humor was much more witty than it used to be and funnier. I had a somewhat sarcastic tone in my voice, I learned how not to be a simple person, and I was and am a tall person, which helped me in my physical appearance. He told me that multiple girls and a guy developed a crush on me, and I had no idea. It was really good to hear from an outside perspective that I have grown as a person and got out of that weird version of myself. This led me to be more confident and learning how to flirt and ask out people. It made me realize that sometimes we need to grow up sometimes. Hopefully other nice guys read this and can learn from this. Also, before anyone says that I could be an attractive person, I am still 5 to 6 out of 10, but my personality is what makes people find me more attractive. The same friend told me this as a quote that I won't ever forget. Have an attractive personality makes you more physically attractive in person. I like to call it physical warping. TLDR, story on how I went from a nice guy to a normal person. You know, I gotta say, this is actually a pretty cool story because this is kind of something we can all do to improve ourselves. We look back on our past, see what we did wrong, see what we can do to correct it for the future, and then in general, it just winds up working out. A lot of people need to realize that it's your personality and it's what's on the inside that counts. Like, nobody wants to eat an Oreo cookie without the cream filling on the inside. The better the personality, the more you'll actually find that person that's likable. Our next story comes to us from username Riles Crocodiles. Facebook guy. Hi all, feel free to remove this if it goes against anything, but this needs to be off my chest cause it's nutty. This is going to be a jumble of words too, so I will try to make it as obvious who the people are. FB dude is pretty obvious, my date is too. So I, 21 girl, received a friend request from a guy that I knew of but have never met. He seemed nice, but I absolutely hate it when I immediately friend somebody on Facebook and they go straight to the DMs. Anyway, he started with a beginning of a pickup line, excuse me, but do you hear that? My mind goes straight to me being rude with him. I replied, what? If you're going to say some dumb shot, I'd say don't. He took that as the cue to shut up and leave me alone and apologize to me. This was from June of 2019. Then, the next month, he asked if it was okay to say something smart. I entertained the idea and told him to shoot his shot. He told me how he likes my memes and stuff, and that I repost on Facebook like I am some meme account, and then asked to be friends. I said sure, because he seemed like he was trying to be more friend-like, and that was chill to me. Facebook dude asked if we could hang out sometimes, and I said that would be fine, but I was busy at the time with work, school, and I actually had a Tinder date lined up within a week, and he started to hang out. I told him not this week, but but we can some other time. Fast forward to a day after my date. I went on a great Tinder date and the dude was nice and 
respectful, and I was going to see if we were still going to hang out that weekend. My date had a concert to go to the next night after our date, and he was texting me after it saying that his friend got his phone smashed on stage by the dude who was performing. I thought nothing of it until I go on Facebook and see that the guy who had sent me the pickup line and asked me to be my friend was the dude I went on a date with friend. Apparently the Facebook dude showed my date our messages and my date thought it was funny but the Facebook dude could not get a hint and told me that he thought his messages to me were weird. I got bombarded with hateful messages saying that he was a quote unquote nice guy and a great guy and how he thought I was different. I apparently disrespected him by going out with his friend that I had no clue that they were friends in the first place. It legitimately felt like he thought he was already in relationship with me. He said that one long message, there is more to this but this is what I am going to type. I feel pretty disrespected, I am honestly not that desperate to find someone at all, although I am looking for a serious long term relationship, I just don't see how that is going to be possible with you. Keep in mind, I told him that I wasn't interested in him and I had no clue that him and my date were even friends because I don't heavily stalk people I go out with. I blocked him in the end and told my date that I was freaked out by the way his friend reacted. My date took my side and promised to never give him any of my information because he knew that I feared that I might have another stalker issue on my hands. I don't think Facebook dude would do that, but it doesn't hurt to be safe. I gotta say, I think the majority of the rule of this thing is sometimes Sometimes bad luck happens because you happen to be messaging one random guy on Facebook who happens to message you to try to think of it as like a dating app and then you have somebody else on an actual dating app who you would like to go see again. Unfortunately, they know each other and the Facebook guy does not like the Tinder guy's date. Hopefully the Tinder date dude gets his phone back. Our next story comes from Refstrom, username Boopin Snoots. Creepy nice guy. I was in high school and I had made friends with a guy named Ben. He was tall and a bit chubby, had the beginnings of a neck beard. He wrote poetry and liked to talk about how he would be a famous writer. We got close as we had classes together, and overall he seemed like an okay guy. I came out as a thespian, and he seemed cool with it. He, we used to hang out and go for walks after school. There was a forest path between my home and the school, and he would walk me through it to make sure I was safe. I did appreciate that, as I was scared of walking through the path alone, and walking around it took twice as long. Things began to get weird when he told me that we should be together because our friends thought we would make a great couple. I had to remind him that I am not interested in men on numerous occasions. One day, he invited me to his place. I asked if his parents were home because my parents didn't like me going to people's houses if their parents weren't home. He told me that his dad would be home by the time we got to his place. While walking to his place, he told me that his dad was a pastor and could fix my preferences, to which I replied, no, conversion therapy does not work. He dropped it. We get to his house and his dad is still not home. Ben said his dad was likely on his way home from work and would be home any minute. I believed him naively. He asked me to go hang out in the basement, which wasn't too weird as I usually hung out with friends in their basements before. We were sitting on the couch in his basement, just talking regularly, and then things got weird. He didn't believe I was a thespian because we spent a lot of time together and our friends thought we would be a good couple, and he talked about how his dad could fix me again. It had been a half an hour and his dad still wasn't home, and I was starting to get nervous and suspicious that Ben had lied to me. I couldn't get a word in, then it happened. He scooched close and started caressing my face and said, you are just so beautiful. I was terrified that I was about to be roped. I got up and bolted out the stairs. I grabbed my shoes and ran out of the house. He ran after me asking what happened. I told him I just wanted to go home. He asked if he could walk me home and I sternly said absolutely not. I didn't stop and he stopped following me when I reached the forest. I ran home. I never told my parents about it because my father would have killed him and all I wanted to do was move on and forget the whole ordeal. Luckily for me, he left for an exchange trip for in his semester soon after the incident so I didn't have to see him. The next semester he came back and started hanging out with our friends again like nothing happened. He stopped being creepy and we never talked about the incident. Over time, I decided to give him another chance, but would only go to public places with him. I ran into him while I was out walking and decided to join him on his stroll. I told him about how a girl in my class asked me out on a date and that I was excited. He stopped and began yelling at me that thespians have an easier time getting dates because women are warier of men than women. He told me that I had ruined his exchange trip because I ran out of his house when he came on to me. He rambled about how being a thespian is a sin and that his dad could fix me so 
I could be with him. It was so cringy that I didn't even know how to respond other than just walking away and going home. I avoided him like the plague after that, but I would catch him giving me awkward stares and he would send me poetry about how much he wanted me. Thankfully, I moved shortly later. The last time I saw him was when I was on a road trip. I spotted him filling his car at a gas station and immediately hunkered down in the car until he drove away. After that, I never saw him again. I'm actually really glad that you don't have to deal with him anymore. And really? Conversion? So that, no, no, but that has never worked, never has worked, and never will work. Why can't people just let other people be happy being who they are? All right, with that, that is going to have to be it with the video. If you had liked what you had seen, be sure to like the video, comment down below what you liked about the video, and subscribe. I'll be sure to see you guys in the next one. Thank you so much for watching, and bye-bye.